Welcome to the Ultimate OBS Setup Guide. It doesn't matter if you stream on Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Kick, Trovo, or anything else. If you're a streamer using OBS, this is the guide for you. My name's Danny, and I stream over on twitch.tv slash dannyvals. In today's video, we're gonna cover some topics which, on the surface, may not seem all that exciting, but stick with it. I guarantee you're gonna learn something new and useful today. This video is going to cover best practices for installing and running OBS, configuring the best settings for your stream, and also demystifying some OBS jargon. This is the first in my ongoing series of OBS guides, so if you haven't already, make sure you press subscribe so you can learn more and really take your stream to the next level. That being said, let's get to it. Of course, if we're gonna use OBS, we need to download and install it first. You can get it from obsproject.com, and throughout this tutorial, we're gonna be using OBS version 29. If you're watching this video sometime in the far distant future, this guide should largely remain the same and remain accurate. However, just bear in mind that some settings may have moved around a little bit. Once you're on the website, we're gonna go over to the download button in the top right hand corner, give it a click, and then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna click download zip. Once that's downloaded, we're gonna extract the zip into our current location. Of course, you can place this wherever you want, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna extract it here in the folder. Once that's extracted, we're gonna go into the directory, go into bin, 64-bit, and we're gonna find obs64.exe. We're gonna just right click and drag this, and we're gonna create a shortcut in the directory itself. From here, we right click it, go to properties, and we're gonna to go to the very end of this, and we're gonna type in space dash dash portable. What this does is it forces OBS to run in portable mode whenever you launch it from this shortcut. The reason we do this is because portable mode keeps all the settings, all the configuration options within this one folder. When you're making your backups, you really should make your backups. You just need to backup this one OBS directory. You don't need to go hunting across your file system into the app data directory or other places to look for your individual settings. This allows us to make one simple backup really quickly, really easily. What we also want to do while we're here is press the advanced button and then click run as administrator. This makes sure that OBS runs with admin privileges. In my experience, if you don't do this, sometimes the stream can be a bit choppy, sometimes OBS has difficulty capturing games, and it's just not a great experience. Once you're done with that, press OK, press OK again, and then we're gonna drag this shortcut onto our desktop, or indeed, anywhere you like. When you open up OBS via the shortcut, Windows is gonna ask you if you definitely wanna proceed. It's safe to say you do. Once you've pressed yes, you're gonna see the auto configuration wizard. Now here, we're gonna optimize for streaming rather than recording, so you can leave this top option checked, and then just press next. It's then gonna ask you for your base canvas resolution and your FPS. FPS, of course, being frames per second. If you set it to 60, things will be nice and smooth, but of course it does require more bandwidth. So if you have a lower end graphics card, maybe consider putting this to 30. The base resolution is how much space you have on OBS's virtual canvas to place your webcam, your gameplay, and any other elements that you're gonna use on your stream. It's important to note here that the base canvas resolution may be different from your broadcast resolution. Meaning, you could have a canvas resolution of say 1080p, but broadcast to 720, where everything will be downscaled and then take up less bandwidth when it's sent to your streaming provider. Here we're gonna to stick to the default values. We're gonna have a 1920 by 1080 base resolution and FPS will be set to either 30 or 60, preferring 60 frames a second. When we press next, it's gonna ask us to choose our streaming platform. I'll be using Twitch, so I'm gonna press the connect account button and then sign in with my bot. Once you're signed in, we're gonna keep prefer hardware encoding ticked. What this does is it makes sure that your GPU does all the encoding rather than your CPU. Your graphics card is literally designed for graphical operations, so we may as well send the encoding over there. If you have a lower powered graphics card, you may wanna consider turning this off to send your encoding to your CPU instead. You can run a bandwidth test if you wish, where OBS will determine your upload speed and your download speed and pick a bitrate accordingly. Bitrate is effectively how much data is encoded in your video when it's being broadcast. If you're not using Twitch, there are plenty of other services you can choose from, such as YouTube, Facebook, or even typing in the settings manually yourself. We can then click next, and of course, if you've chosen to run the bandwidth test, this is when it'll do its thing. Once that comes back, we can press apply settings. If you're streaming to Twitch, OBS will then open up your stream chat and your stream information over here. We can close these off if we don't want them. And if we do want to get them back in the future, it's just a case of going into the docs and pressing chat or stream information accordingly. While we're here though, one thing we definitely want to do is enable the stats doc. This will give us useful information about our CPU, our disk space, and crucially, any missed frames due to encoding lag or rendering lag. If you're having issues with your stream, this can be a great tool for troubleshooting. You can then place this window wherever it makes sense to you, be it on another monitor or docked within OBS itself. To dock something in OBS, you can just drag it to the left, to the right, up top, or down below. Personally, I like to have things docked at the bottom, so that's where we're gonna place this. If you don't like the layout, you can always drag things to resize them, like so, close them off, or simply rearrange them to something that makes sense for you. If things do go terribly wrong, and sometimes that happens, you can reset the docks by going up to docks, reset docks, 
and pressing yes. You can then place things back wherever you like. I like to have mine set up something a little like this, where I've got all the stats available here, easily visible, and my audio mixer on the right. Once you're happy with your layout, press settings. So rather than go through the settings in their default order, I'm actually gonna go through in a slightly different order that makes more sense for this tutorial. So we're gonna go into stream, and you can see here you've got a streaming service, what server it's connecting to, and a disconnect button. If you stream to Twitch, you'll also see this checkbox to enable bandwidth test mode. When this box is checked, if you press start streaming, your stream will go up to the Twitch servers, but they won't actually broadcast you to your followers. Think of this like a dry run mode. As far as OBS is concerned, as far as your PC is concerned, you're broadcasting to Twitch. You are live, you are streaming like normal. This can be essential for debugging certain issues. You can then choose to enable a couple of Twitch chat add-ons if you wish. By default, this is set to none, but I like to set it to better TTV. If you've not used better TTV before, think of it like a third party emote service where if you run a Twitch channel and you run out of emote slots, you can use better TTV to effectively give yourself extra emotes. It's really cool. And by enabling it here, if you have the chat dock enabled, you'll see all these custom emotes in your OBS. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, is this setting right here. Ignore streaming service setting recommendations. By checking this box, it allows you to override the maximum bitrate that a streaming service will allow. This can be fantastic for making sure your footage doesn't look grainy and appears nice and smooth. However, it's essential to bear in mind this doesn't just affect you, it affects your viewers as well. If you're streaming above the maximum recommended limits, this is going to mean that your viewers will need an even faster connection in order to consume your content at the highest quality possible. So, that being said, don't set this to something silly like 60,000, it won't end well for you or for your viewers. We're going to turn this on though, because we're going to go just above the limit by not too much. Clicking this button does say, hey, are you definitely, definitely sure you want to do that? We're going to say yes. We're going to apply these settings and then go to the output section. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is go to the output mode here and change it from simple to advanced. This is going to give us more granularity, more control over different options such as streaming, recording, audio and replay buffer. So we'll kick off with the streaming tab. The very first option here is what audio track you want to broadcast to your streaming platform of choice. We're actually gonna set up three audio tracks, but the very first audio track is the one we want to send to our streaming platform. If you stream to Twitch, you'll also have an option to use a different audio track for your VODs and for your clips. Now, if we enable this, you'll see we can pick one of six different audio tracks. So you may, for instance, have track one as your gameplay and your microphone and your music, but on track two, have just your gameplay and just your microphone, taking your music out of the equation. Some people might use this to play copyrighted music on their streams. You can then choose your audio encoder, by default, it's just FFmpeg AAC, but if you have any third-party plugins to give you more encoders, they'll appear here. Video coder, I would strongly recommend setting this to NVIDIA NVENC if you have it. The video encoding capabilities of the 1000 series and higher are incredible, so set this to this if you have it. I'm running an NVIDIA 3000 series graphics card, so I'm gonna press this. We can then choose to rescale our output if we wish. So this is what I was referring to earlier with the base canvas resolution. If you have a canvas resolution of say 1080p, but you want to broadcast at 720p instead, this is how you do it. It's a good way of saving a little bit of bandwidth. We're not gonna do that here though. We're gonna have a broadcast resolution of the same as our canvas size, which is 1080p. Onto our encoder settings, and we're gonna make sure rate control is set to CBR. CBR is constant bitrate as opposed to a variable bitrate. Using a constant bitrate helps to ensure that your viewers have a smooth experience when watching your stream. If you were to use a variable bitrate, this would mean that more complex scenes during your stream may require more bandwidth to be downloaded. If you've got to use it on a slow connection, this might mean that your stream becomes choppy for them. So constant bitrate is the way to go. As for the bitrate, depending on your connection, of course, I would say this should be at least 5,000 kilobits a second. The reason being, if you have any fast motion, any fast action in your gameplay or your stream, this may become a bit blurry or a bit grainy. By setting a higher bitrate, you're ensuring that less quality is lost. Now, I'm actually gonna set this to 7,500 kilobits a second because I know that my computer can handle it, my network connection can handle it, and also it's not that far above the 6,000 kilobits a second that Twitch recommends. For the keyframe interval, we're actually gonna set this to two seconds. By default, it's set to zero, and it's not actually zero seconds, but it's zero auto. This is generally around eight seconds. The keyframe interval dictates how frequently a keyframe is encoded into your stream. You might be asking yourself, well, what's a keyframe? The way video coding often works to save on bandwidth, to save on space, is rather than encoding every single pixel in a frame, it just encodes those ones which move or have changed in some way. When the encoder encounters a keyframe, it's basically saying, take this entire image and capture it. Don't just take the moving parts, take everything. The more frequently this keyframe is, the higher quality your stream is gonna look. However, 
there's a processing overhead. If you keep on sending keyframes, your graphics card may be bogged down with encoding the stream rather than playing your game or broadcasting your stream. So bear that in mind. The encoding preset is the balance between encoding speed and encoding quality. There's no one size fits all solution for this. So I would say have a try with different presets and see what works best for you. We're gonna keep it on good quality here because I know that my PC can't deal with that. All these other settings here though, we're gonna leave at their defaults. The only thing I would say is if you have a dedicated GPU for encoding, such as an Intel Arc GPU, make sure you increase this GPU number from zero to one. Zero is your default graphics card. So for most people, we can leave it as is. We're then gonna press apply and go over to the recording tab. Personally, I like to record all of my streams onto a separate hard drive. This gives me the chance to later go back into a stream and pick out funny moments, maybe make them into clips of social media, maybe make them into like a compilation video. It gives me some options. If you want to do this as well, I'd say just pick a recording path that makes sense for you. The recording format we're gonna leave as MKV. There are of course other formats available, but MKV is really good because it's sort of fail safe. If OBS crashes for some reason, if there's a power cut and your PC just turns off spontaneously, your video file won't be ruined. Other recording formats may require some kind of encoding at the very end of the stream. And if you lose power or OBS crashes, it's not gonna be able to do that, resulting in a broken file. With MKV, you don't have that. So even if you lose power, even if OBS crashes, you still have a video. For the video encoder, if at all possible, I would recommend setting it to different than the stream encoder. Using the stream encoder is good for being able to have like a local copy of what your streaming platform would see. However, if you can record a higher quality and you have the capacity for it, you may as well. This means if you're going back through your videos and making social media clips or compilation videos or YouTube uploads or something like that, you're gonna have a higher quality source file to work with. Once again, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card that is capable of using the NVENC encoder, use it. Here we're gonna pick H.264 and we're gonna pick one, two, three audio tracks, which we'll set up in a moment. For your encoder settings, I'd say set these to about double what you're using for your stream. So my bitrate on stream is going to be 7,500 kilobits a second. So for my local recordings, I'm gonna have this double the amount. The keyframe interval, we can have twice as fast by setting it to one, or generally speaking, two seconds is about right. For the preset, as before, make sure you do some testing and see what works well for you. I'm gonna keep this on slow, good quality, and everything else, once again, will remain the same. Again, if you have a secondary graphics card, here's where you set that. Into the audio section, and we've got three separate tracks in the recording, so we're gonna label these. Track one is going to be our stream mix. So anything the stream hears, we're gonna save in track one. Track number two is going to be mic only. So this will record just our microphone. And track number three will be no mic. The reason we do this is so if we're going back through our videos at a later date, we can make the volume of the microphone a little bit higher if we need to. We can make the gameplay a little bit quieter if we need to. So we have some options when we're rendering our audio out later. The audio bitrate, I find 160 works about well, but again, if you're making a local recording, you may as well increase this if you have the capacity to do so. Finally, onto the replay buffer. Now, this is actually an OBS killer feature. It is super, super useful. And honestly, I misunderstood it when I first saw it. I thought the replay buffer was turn on and at will, you could just press a button and show the last 30 seconds of your stream all over again. Useful for like kill cams and stuff. Turns out that's not what it is at all. What the replay buffer actually does is it takes the last 20, 30, or however many seconds you set of your stream and a press of a button saves it to your computer. This is an amazing way of making content out of your stream. You can have a 30 second clip, trim off the beginning, trim off the end, add some overlays. You got something you can share on YouTube. You got something you can share on TikTok. It is super useful and I wish I'd known about it sooner. We enable the replay buffer simply by clicking this box here and then setting a maximum replay time. I find about 30 seconds works well for a clippable moment, but if you've got the story space, you may as well set this to 45, 60 seconds if you can. Once you're happy with your maximum replay time, press apply and go over to general. When it comes to updates, in general, I like to have these turned off. Even here, it's just a reminder of an update. It's not an automatic application of an update, but still, very often you'll see a thing and go, ooh, new stuff, gimme but this can break plugins, this can break workflows, and I just think it's a bad idea. If you do decide to have this on though, and you do decide to update OBS, make sure you take it back up first. Onto the output section, we wanna take four of these checkboxes. We want to show a confirmation dialog when streaming starts, so we're not gonna go live accidentally before we meant to. We're gonna do the same thing for when streaming stops, for the same reason, we don't wanna end prematurely. We wanna automatically start recording when we stream, and automatically start the replay buffer when we're streaming as well. Press apply, and then go over to audio. Your audio setup will largely be dictated by what equipment you actually have. However, one bit of advice I do have is to set things manually. Don't rely on the defaults. Windows likes to change things around and it can be a pain. So I'm using a Go XLR, so I set my desktop audio to system and my microphone to the chat mic. Press apply and then we go over to the hotkeys. 
there are loads and loads of different hotkeys you can set up. So I definitely recommend scrolling through this list and seeing kind of what works for you. You might want to have a dedicated key for starting your stream, for ending your stream. One thing that's essential though, is that replay buffer. We enabled it earlier, so we may as well set up a hotkey for it now. So in the filter section, we can type in replay and you'll have the option to start, stop or save. Click into the save replay field and set it to a key combination you're not going to accidentally press. For safety's sake, I like to have control, alt, shift, and another key. So we're gonna say equals in this instance. Once we press apply, anytime the replay buffer is running, when you press that key combination, it's gonna be saved to your computer. Nice. And that's part one. Part two is available in two weeks, so the 26th of June, 2023. If you're visiting from the future, it's already gonna be up on the channel, so go have a look. If you've learned anything new today, please do let me know in the comments. And if you haven't, let me know in the comments. If you wanna watch another video, you can click right here. I've been Danny, I'll catch you on the next one.